All right, well, thank you. Um, welcome, everybody. Thank you for being here. And uh, on this session, uh, we're going to focus on uh, 4G wireless evolution, but not particularly on the technology per se. We're going to try to focus on what we think is one of the pillars of uh, deploying and uh, developing and adopting 4G technologies, uh, which we think it's uh, ecosystems. And ecosystems, uh, as defined in the simplest way in our context, uh, referring to uh, companies, groups of companies, getting together to achieve a common goal or a common set of goals. And there's a concept also of balance, equilibrium, and mutual dependency in ecosystems. So um, the other subtopic of uh, today is um, what we call the connected user experience. So we want to focus on 4G as an enabling technology, really to, uh, to deliver the kinds of applications that users are expecting, and not really on the technology that's underlying all these applications. So um, let me just start by giving you guys some examples. We're going to, if you're following me, we're going to a slide two, really. Um, there are here some examples of the things that can be done in a 4G environment. And if any of you had the opportunity to be at CTIA uh, back in April, uh, Akatalusa showcased uh, the first one we call the Mobile Enhanced Reality Application. And you've probably seen that augmented reality is becoming a hot topic right now. We think it's going to take off in the next uh, couple of years. So in this, um, in this application that we had, we were showcasing how you can uh, point your mobile phone, say, to a movie poster in a retail store. And then there's a back-end off-board processing that happens, and then that poster is analyzed. And then you get in your phone a video clip of the movie. And that you can watch in real time on the phone, or you can also forward that to your social networking account, to your Facebook and Twitter, and you can share that with your friends. And then there's also what we call a multi-screen component. And you can send this video clip to, say, a car. You can send the video clip to your laptop at home or your big screen TV at home, and you can even purchase the movie in that way. So that's an example of what we call moment enhanced reality that's enabled by 4G technologies uh, that are being deployed in the next couple of years. The second one is uh, what we call next generation music experience. So this is really about uh, richer music content and all about social network. And of course, that's happening today in the 3G environment. But we think that 4G is really going to enable the potential that you can have when you provide richer experiences to the user in a mobile environment. I'm going to go into more detail later on each of these examples. The third one that we have here is uh, vehicles. And you already heard about vehicle management and tracking, like fleet management. So this is about the consumer vehicle, right, your car. And there are many initiatives in the industry in this regard. So, But think about the possibilities of delivering a whole bunch, a new suite of services to the vehicle, like telematics, certainly information, entertainment, to the back seat, um, and machine-to-machine -machine possibilities. And the last example here is uh, we're paying close attention to healthcare. And I think there are parallel tracks in this conference about healthcare. So you can really see how healthcare can benefit from a collaboration between patient, nurse, and doctor in a wireless environment. So these are only examples. I just wanted to uh, give, you guys, give you guys a taste for what we think can happen in a 4G environment. So you may have seen this in other tracks, other sessions in this conference, but um, when 3G started, everything was about accessing the internet. So it was really connecting to one application. Uh, that evolved into connected devices. So today you have uh, certainly a bunch of smartphones, iPhones, uh, your berries, uh, certainly netbooks. And we think that's going to be extended in the future to consumer electronic devices. So we think there are going to be more and more connected devices. So that is bringing us to the next step, which is a connected consumer or connected user. So we call that um, a person who really has access to their information and their entertainment, wherever they are, with any device that they have. So this is whether you're in your personal life, in your professional life, or your entertainment life. So that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to enrich the life of the connected consumer with ecosystems that focus on the deployment and adoption of 4G technologies. Yes. Go back. We, you're asking about specifically Akata Lucent? Well, we have both technologies. Uh, we have many developments and uh, deployments in WiMAX. 
Uh, we started with Alvarian as a fixed access replacement, basically. Uh, we have our own solution for mobile access in WiMAX. But uh, we are putting our full emphasis right now on LTE technologies and LTE advanced for 4G, uh, simply because we see that that's the way the industry is going. Uh, we still have, I was working in Latin America a year ago, and we have many deployments right there. That there's a, a market for WiMAX, so we continue that. We think that's going to continue to grow. So we will continue to support those deployments that exist. Any more comments? Well, we, we're placing a bet on LTE as a company, uh, simply because our major customers have adopted LTE. Uh, that started clearly with the Verizon announcement back in February in Mobile World Congress. Verizon is one of our major customers. And the same thing is happening in Europe right now, and we think that Asia is going to follow suit. Uh, Latin America is a little more delayed, but uh, we are already in conversations to have trials in Latin America with the uh, service provider there. You're welcome. So this is the data point from the industry. We talk certainly a lot with customers. We talk a lot with analysts and the press. And what they're telling us, I'm just going to quote this, that the traditional industry cascade supply chain model is no longer sustainable. So we say the same thing in a different way. We say that the one-to-one -one relationship where you have a supplier and a customer in like a closed model is sort of exhausted. Um, it doesn't work anymore. And you think about it that before, Telco companies only deliver tele telephony services to the customers. That was the end of it. So now they have to interact with a whole bunch of industries. So they have to open up certainly to Internet services, to media and entertainment services. So in that sense, they have to talk, like you see here, with retailers, with Internet firms, consumer electronics. So their universe has expanded, and they have to expand the frontier. The same thing has to happen for companies like I got to lose who are on the supplier side of the equation. So we need to partner with a whole bunch of industries outside of the telecom space that have not been traditional for us. So what used to be a one-to-one -one problem, right, with a supplier and customer relationship, now it's becoming a many-to-many -many, or multi-dimensional problem where you have to really to deal with different industries in a collaborative, in a collaborative environment. So how do we make it real? Well, um, I got to listen, conceived, and found it this ecosystem that we call NG Connect, that stands for Next Generation Connectivity. So the goal of the ecosystem is really to bring together different players in the digital value chain. And we want to drive the development of those services that I mentioned to you before, innovative services that are going to stimulate the adoption of 4G technologies. And you'll see later that we have a whole bunch of industries, it's not only telecom, that are already part of the program. Things that we're trying to do is, well, we want to make all these players, all these industries, talk in the same environment. Remember the ecosystems are with different companies and in different industries. So we want to make sure that they talk. Companies that don't traditionally talk to each other, we want to make sure that they, they work together on the development, on all the issues of the deployment of the technology. We also want to make sure that we identify sources of revenue, right? Because if we deploy a technology for our customers, we need to show them how the money is going to flow. So we also work on what the business issues are in terms of deploying these new services in 4G. We also want to make sure that everything is done early. So we think it's important to work on these ecosystems early and way before the technology is deployed. So you guys probably know that 4G is going to be deployed commercially in the next couple of years throughout the world. So that's why we started working on the ecosystem back in February. We think it's important to have many of the issues resolved before the technology is actually available to the users so that the users can already have a good experience when they start adopting the technology. And finally, uh, some of the concepts that are being developed by this ecosystem, NG Connect, they're applicable today to 3G technologies, but um, you're not going to find or get the same quality of experience. They re they're really designed so that they can exploit the benefits of uh, high data rates and low latency that 4G, LTE, or WiMAX, either one delivers. What are the industries that I mentioned before that NG Connect as an ecosystem is focusing on? And what are the different areas that we're working on as well? On the right-hand side, you'll see what we call our pinwheel. And you clearly recognize there that we have a lot of industries that are not telecom, as I mentioned before. So we're talking to automotive industries, to advertising companies, computing, gaming, even retail and white good manufacturers. So this is really outside of the traditional telecom ecosystems 
that you probably are familiar with right now. So this is something new. It's the first one that exists in the industry today. There are three initial goals for the ecosystem. One is clearly to accelerate the deployment of these services and devices that I was talking about. And the way to accomplish that is within the ecosystem, with all the members, we develop proofs of concepts, and we call them POCs, which are really pre-integrated solutions that are going to offer some kind of service, a novel, uh, innovative service to the customer. So we do this pre-integration a priori, so to make sure that all the technology kinks are worked out. We make sure that the business models are worked out. So that's the second point. We need to figure out who's going to make, who's going to make money and how, how the money is going to flow. So every time we create a proof of concept, we surround that, we support that with the business model. So when we go to a customer, or when a member of the ecosystem goes to a customer, they can already say, hey, Mr. Customer, this is the way that you can deploy this service, and this is the way in which you can make money with it. And finally, the third objective, at least initially, is to extend or broaden what we call the advanced light cap. So I mentioned before that we had a connected device. So now you, you probably have heard in the industry that there are companies who want to embed a 4G chip, YMAX or LTE, in many consumer electronic devices. So this is like your connected washing machine, right? So it's becoming reality, and actually one of the members of the program is Samsung, and they already have this. They already have the white goods uh, that are connected. So that is happening today. Uh, certainly machine-to-machine -machine is a new field, and I think there's a parallel track here talking about machine-to-machine. -machine. We think it's extremely important. It's also going to be enabled and empowered by 4G technologies. And finally, the car that I mentioned before, there are many initiatives in the industry, so automotive is yet another terminal. If you think about it, the car is another terminal where you can consume all these kinds of services. We're focusing on five different areas. I'm going to mention them here, and then I'm going to spend the next uh, few minutes that we have on details of them. The first one is consumer media and entertainment. That includes uh, music, includes video content, includes gaming. Second one we call enterprise collaboration. And we clearly have a focus on e-healthcare right now, an additional focus on e-learning. The third one is automotive connectivity that I already mentioned many times, so I'm going to talk about that a little bit later also. The fourth is digital signage, and this may be new for some people, but it's about the dynamic content that can be presented in flat panel displays, replacing static billboards. And the last one is the computer experience, which you can equate to cloud computing and machine to machine. I think there's also uh, parallel tracks here that uh, discuss this. I think it's a, it's a growing area as well. Any other questions so far? Yeah. Tell me about the ecosystem. I mean, how do you address the areas for uh, hurricane areas and things of that nature? I mean, service providers aren't so quick to put everything into a wireless network in areas of the Caribbean, Mexico, and things of that nature, the hurricanes. How did 4G address that? Well, um, why do you refer specifically to hurricanes? Um, I mean, hurricanes are special cases, right? Well, so, the right, but I'm saying that, you know, one of the statements that's made yeah. is, you know, the traditional industry casting supply chain long is sustainable in terms of traditional telecom ecosystems. Right. I mean, there's still a lot to be said for copper in those areas where they really can't put all their eggs in one basket with 4G. Well, if you think about it, um, if there's a disaster, what you usually do is you bring your, you your, your, you bring your wireless equipment, equipment right, to get it up and running there. Yeah. So uh, I guess uh, with WiMAX, for instance, you can have that coverage because it's wider coverage. You can do the same thing with LTE. So I guess cellular technologies or WiMAX kind of technologies lend themselves to supporting disaster kind of uh, situations. It's not really the focus of, of this ecosystem, but um, public safety is an area that we're investigating. So how this can be applied to public safety or, or public security or disasters, I mean, it's something that could, we could consider. It's not really one of our focus areas today but uh, clearly cellular technologies enable themselves or lend themselves to that. You're welcome. Any other questions? So can you talk about how companies might go about joining this or whether you know, universities or... Sure. Uh, let me start with universities. For universities, we have in Alcatel-Lucent the UIP, the University Innovation Program. And the universities are not really members of the program. They are really attached to it. 
Uh, and there are some legal issues with universities being part of the ecosystem. So uh, we're really attaching them because we want to make sure that we are connected to the academia because a lot of the innovation sometimes comes from universities. And sometimes that innovation to become commercial needs to go through a channel. So we think that the ecosystem can provide a channel for university innovations into the customers. To become a member, um, the criteria is really simple. Uh, you really have to have something innovative that's going to enhance the, uh, the consumer experience in a 4G environment. So whether it's a product, a solution, or a service, it, it really doesn't matter. And um, there's no fee to join the program as of yet, although that may change next year. Uh, we started uh, this in February at Mobile World Congress in Barcelona. We have 25 members today. There are companies large and small and everything in between. So uh, having, uh, I guess, a high revenue number, a large number of employees is not really a requirement to be part of the program. The idea is uh, we want you to be uh, creative. We want you to have something cool. And I'm going to talk about now in the next few minutes of some of the companies that have some examples that fit into these focus areas. All right, so let me go to the first one, consumer media and entertainment. So here I mentioned it's about music content, it's about video content, it's also about entertainment in general, like gaming experiences. And um, so how do these differ in a 4G environment? Well, we have companies like signed like uh, Atlantic Records. They are the largest music label in, in the U.S. Uh, they have a fan base uh, application, so you can really access music content in your phone, but it's rich music content. So the idea is that 4G enables high data rates. So you're going to have also video clips attached to that. You're going to have uh, information on the bands. You're going to have location on the bands. So you really have a lot of information that's contextual for the music. It's not music alone. So we are working on a proof of concept that's going to be launched pretty soon with Atlantic Records on that. Uh, another uh, company is uh, Buzz Media, and they specialize in celebrity tracking. And um, this is cool. You can actually go. You can go today to sellerbus.com and you can see their web application. But they're working on a 4G mobile application. So if you're interested in knowing what Britney Spears is doing and where she is now, they can use location-based services and they can tell you right right this moment where she is. So that's what we're working on right now. Um, you can find celebrities. I think there's a delay of a few hours now because I think they do that process manually. So now we're working on adding real-time location-based services to that so you can figure out uh, who they are and who they're with, what they like, who they're dating. And, of course, you as a consumer, if you enter an area that your favorite celebrity was in, then you can get information dropped to your phone on, well, she ate this, or you should you know, get a coupon. You get a coupon to eat the same thing. So things like that are really enabled by the data rates that we're talking about in 4G and the new kinds of applications that we're thinking about. In terms of gaming... Uh, this is also cool because um, we're talking about mobile massive multiplayer games. So this is not your traditional vanilla game. It's games that really require low latencies. Uh, we have a couple of companies who are developing games. Um, one is called uh, connect to media and they have developed the World Poker Tour and the uh, Guitar Hero for the mobile device. Another company is Fish Labs. And they have developed something they call Powerboat Racing. You can download that today on your iPhone, although it's still a low bandwidth application. I guess it exploits the, uh, the advantages of Wi-Fi. But the idea is to make that commercially available in a 4G environment. And the key here for these games is latency. So they have to have, the network has to have under 70, 80 millisecond latency for the game experience to be satisfactory to the gamer. And you know the gamers are very picky about that. So really we think that WiMAX or LTE with high data rates and low latencies are going to be able to meet the demands of, of the gaming community. Uh, we have other companies, and uh, you guys can go. We have a website, ngconnect.org. Uh, if you're interested in other companies, you can always go there, see what the companies are doing, see what proofs of concept we have, and see other benefits that we think that ecosystems are bringing to the industry. In terms of enterprise collaboration, as I said, we're focusing on healthcare and learning. Uh, the uh, interest comes mainly from the healthcare insurance companies. There's uh, an aging population, it says here in the U.S. and Canada, but I think it's a, it's a world phenomenon. And there's a lot of chronic diseases, so the interest is really to extend the hospital environment where they're already using wireless technologies, mostly Wi-Fi in the hospital. But the idea is to extend that to a larger community 
where with the cellular technology you can really monitor the patients and you can have collaboration among the patient, the physician, and the nurse. So we have um, a trial going on in France with Alcatel Lucent where we have uh, blood pressure monitoring and blood glucose monitoring. So the person really has these devices that are, they could be Wi-Fi enabled, but you can think of the uh, e-book reader, the wireless e-book reader model that have a cellular device built in. So that's the idea. So you have a blood pressure monitor that has a cellular connection built in, and that is being monitored by your physician, or you can monitor that yourself. So that's really uh, one of the things that we're contemplating for a healthcare application. The same for e-learning. Clearly, 4G is enabling users to learn anywhere they are. And 4G, because of the data rates, allows rich content also to be produced in an e-learning platform. We have a couple of companies there, Words and Numbers and Learning Mate, that are part of the, part of the program. And they both produce content, and they can adapt the content for different audiences and different devices. So we are working now on a proof of concept that's going to showcase 4G video and rich content for the e-learning environment. Automotive, um, this is, uh, we think it's pretty cool for the auto fans that we have in our, in our team. So it's really about connecting the car, and there are a number of initiatives in the industry. Uh, you probably heard the Sprint and Ford uh, office, I think they call it wireless office. So um, we think there could be a lot more services that can be offered to the car. So there are certainly information and entertainment delivered to the car. If you think many cars have now back seat screens, certainly the navigation screen, and now they're thinking of a passenger screen that's going to be you know, close to the airbag. So if you think about it, you have four screens in the car already. So that's really a lot of real estate for advertisers, for marketers, for gaming companies to deliver their products and services. Other cases, other examples of services are telematics. So you can do vehicle wellness monitoring. Your dealer can do that if you choose to allow the dealer to do it, or you can do it yourself. You could be in your office and you could check the entire pressure of your car remotely. Uh, firmware upgrades. I mean, it's very expensive for companies to recall a vehicle, to schedule an appointment to the dealership, to do a firmware upgrade, where that can be done automatically in real time with wireless technologies. So um, there, there are many, many opportunities for new services in a vehicle, and if you think about it, a vehicle is yet another terminal that has four screens. So it's really a great opportunity for that. And uh, in Alcatel Lucent, we're working with a company called QNX Software Systems. They develop real-time embedded operating systems for vehicles and for healthcare. So we're working on our version of the connected car, so soon we're going to have uh, news. So if you guys stay tuned, you're going to hear the, a whole comprehensive suite of services that we're going to enable for, for vehicles. And the two last examples, digital signage I mentioned before. So this is an opportunity for advertisers and marketers to have dynamic content displayed on many places. So it could be on a bus, it could be in the subway, it could be here, it could be in the streets. So we have a company called MediaTile that's part of the program that they are leaders in the U.S. They have a cellular sign in a box. All it needs is just power. You just plug it in. It's like a kiosk. Automatically gets information from a 3G network today. But we think that we can enrich the content that science provide with video, with interactivity, when we connect that to a 4G environment. Similarly, there's a company called Sinex in Germany. And their signs, they have about 2,000 of them deployed in Germany. They have the ability, because they have a little camera, to monitor who is standing next to the sign. So they can roughly tell your age and your gender, and then they can gather demographics on who is standing next to the sign, and they can send that information back to the marketing or advertising agency. The last one here, it's a computer experience or next generation computing or cloud computing, machine to machine, whatever you want to call it. But it's clearly a, a new field, or maybe a new name for an old field. Many people use uh, web-based email, so that's clearly an application. Uh, you probably use, some of you use Google Docs, so another application. And if you think about those applications without connectivity, you cannot really use them. Right? So you cannot access any cloud services if you don't have connectivity. So we think that certainly fixed connectivity is a way to get there. But in an environment like this, you probably want to have wireless connectivity, and so we think that 4G is going to enable that. We have a number of companies there. Uh, just to mention a couple, Intermac is a company that provides a platform as a service. Uh, they provide home monitoring, home surveillance solutions as a platform that you can access via your service provider portal or your phone so you can really manage your home in terms of uh, security intrusions and power consumption. And the last one that I didn't mention before is voice. 
Uh, not everything is data and video, so voice is still considered. So a company that we have that just joined the program is called Rebelbox, and they provide a cloud-based voice application that's going to end drop calls and it's going to provide a merge of instant messaging and voicemail. So you don't have to spend two minutes to leave a 10-second voicemail to anybody. So that's in summary, guys, uh, the different focus areas that we have in the program. So we think that there's a new way to do things. We think that uh, work in a collaborative environment is extremely necessary for adoption of these new technologies. We think it's a little different. We think it's a little ambitious, but we think that's a way in which technologies like 4G are going to be able to deliver on the promise of what we call the connected user experience. Thank you, Sylvia. Okay.